Oh, hello. I'm happy to see everyone again. English only today, I'm afraid. out and we can start I suppose we can resume where we left. Uh, no. Uh, now let me share it uh, in another place uh, where I think, uh, I mean, people might be interested in, in looking at this. Uh, Everything is smooth. Hmm. Okay, dove era la missione? Where was the mission? Over the Pennsylvania Railroad. There you go. The massive beast of a locomotive that is the Pennsylvania Railroad K4. Oh boy. This is gonna be interesting. Now, um, we went uh, in the last episode, we climbed uh, the, um, the Allegheny Mountains from Johnstown to Crescent. And now we're going. We're gonna go downhill from Crescent to Altoona. So help me God. <laughs> I really don't like making the sense. It's complicated, especially without a proper, real locomotive to work with. Believe it or not, it's easier to operate a real locomotive than playing a game. I'm not kidding. something for okay the mighty k4 
I'm always kind of a, not intimidated, but like let you know, I, I lose a lot of uh, gut. Uh, we can say, we can claim that when I see how few VTubers uh, or actually YouTubers in general make it to success. Oops, I did not turn on my face track. I cannot play the game without it because I need to look around the locomotive and be able to observe my surroundings and therefore I need that there you go now it works again this is a, this is a triple set of Pennsylvania Railroad K4s one of the most successful series of locomotives ever built. Uh, Okay, let's set up the train for the descent. Yeah, in fact, uh, we did a small reduction. more reduction of time to keep the locomotive going I'm gonna charge my phone in the meantime because I need it for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a hard one for me.
slowly but surely. We need to get to a happy, happy spot. any problems I can still crack the throttle a little bit. There's a train hold. How the air brake systems work on this locomotive is magnificent. It's one of those uh, feet of technology you don't, you know, you wouldn't expect uh, until you smash your nose into the. What I mean is that you, you know, you think uh, air into cylinder makes, uh, you know, brake supply, and you would be right, uh, but that's not for the whole train. I mean the locomotive uh, with some small different brakes like that. You put air on the cylinder via a regulating valve and you decide how much you want to brake. But on modern trains uh, in Italy and in the US uh, and in every country that isn't Britain, if I recall correctly, we have uh, automatic brakes. Uh, they're called automatic brakes because they come on automatically when the um, if the airline gets broken between the locomotive and the various uh, carriages and this system prevents uh, a train with a broken pipe to go you know down a hill because it has no air in the brakes also pressurizing uh, you know braking via putting air into the uh, the main conduct will Will not to make sure. Will not ensure a smooth braking because uh, the last carriages, for example, will not get uh, that high of a pressure, and you might end up with a train that is not braking at the rear. Also, if there is a leak anywhere along the line, uh, the the air would rather escape the braking of the line than apply in the brake. And this doesn't work uh, like trucks. So, by the way, I, I'm someone that works with trucks a lot of a lot, and so. Uh, this doesn't work like trucks. Uh, on trucks you have a spring uh, that keeps the brakes applied and you use air to release the brakes. On trains uh, um, you have a system that has uh, two sets of air tanks, uh, at least in the Italian ones, then I do not know. In the US I think it's, uh, it's a bit different, uh, just a bit different like on minor te technical differences, but in Italy uh, you charge uh, the main conduit, the main air conduit throughout the train and uh, you set uh, the main air tank on each single car with a predetermined amount of pressure. When after the air tank is full, a second tank starts filling up on every carriage, carriage which uh, is going to be what we call the control 
uh, tank. Now, the control tank is connected uh, to two things. It's connected to a, a logic valve and to the main conduit. Um, the logic valve that I just mentioned, it's a new piece of equipment, is connected to the air tank, the check tank, and the main conduit. Has a fourth way that is to the brakes, and if the air in the conduit becomes smaller, like the pressure of air in the conduit becomes smaller than the air present in the control tank, then the valve open and allows air from the main reservoir, so the big tank, to go into the cylinder brakes and break the train. Now, a simple way to describe it is a logic valve that controls how much pressure there is uh, on the main conduit, uh, how many pressure there is on the tank, and if there is a difference between the two, we'll apply the brake. Uh, the Italian system, the thing that we have in Italy right now, in my opinion, is a bit more versatile, because it allows us to make the calculation if the train is running light or if it's running empty. There is a valve you can switch, and uh, we'll make sure that you can, uh, um, if you throw the valve to the sea, for example, it's for cargo, and uh, we'll apply brakes, uh, you know, with a higher degree of pressure. So we'll make sure that the reservoir tank has less air into it than, sorry, the, the, the check tank has less air into it than the, um, then the conduit and the and and the other sorry and, and the other time so any any reduction will literally not affect the air tank initially and it will take a while for the check tank to realize why the pressure has dropped so we need to break right <coughs> now uh, how do we oh hello Matt Hi Matteo. So, thanks for following. Um, so, uh, what I was saying, yeah. So, if you switch it to passenger, it will it, to the P, which would be passenger, but it, you can call it light uh, on on freight cars. Uh, it will consider the car empty. Therefore, the brakes will apply immediately after you start re the reduction in pressure. Kind of smart uh, how all these things work. Now, because my English is not perfect, I might have messed up some definitions on some phrasings. But it's okay. If anyone has any question about it, they, they can ask. They can ask me. I will answer. Welcome to the horseshoe curve. Curve, Altuna. This place exists in real life. It's one of the most beautiful places in existence, in my opinion. Gonna put some coal and water into the engine. I think the mission bugged, but it's okay.
Okay, increase the speed to 35. Not too bad. Get ready for braking. Oh, there's a problem. Yeah. Silly me. Silly me. Very silly me. Ah, ok, ok, grazie, uh, grazie Leo. Thank you very much. Uh, Leo, ti risponderò in inglese se per te lo stesso. I hope everyone can appreciate the K4 as much as I do. I'm a Pensley main. I mean in real life, I mean most of my model trains on my shelves are Pennsylvania Railroad <coughs> model trains of course. So Leo, do you have any question? Because I, when I 
thought I had shared the correct link for the live stream. Uh, I described how braking works uh, on a train. <clears throat> So if you want, I can do a quick rundown again. Let me know. Okay, <clears throat> braking. Um, the stupid brain, uh, you know, the level zero understanding of how braking works. Uh, is uh, you put in into a cylinder, the cylinder is connected to a rod, the rod is connected to a brake shoe and it uh, pinches the wheel and brakes. This is a simple understanding of it. Now, it would be correct if we're talking about uh, locomo the locomotives themselves because uh, the locomotive itself has its own independent uh, brake system and they and it basically only per its only purpose is to brake the locomotive. I can decide how much air I want by opening and closing the valve. Brain, brain that simple. There is a second uh, braking system on a train. Uh, I've been at, at least in the European uh, and uh, American one. It's called automatic braking, and uh, it's called automatic braking because you use uh, um, in case the train should break up. Uh, and you lose the air connection, the train will automatically stop. Therefore, automatic braking. Um, so, the... Oh. Grazie for the follow. Um, so, the automatic braking uh, is uh, a bit... Uh, it's a bit something to understand. So, you have, uh, at least in Italy, the ones I worked with, um, you have uh, four main components on the system. Their air conduct, a main reservoir tank for the air, which is, has a one-way uh, connection, so you can only put air in. And then uh, you have uh, a, um, a logic valve, which is connected to the, um, to the main reservoir, to the... Um, Tech tank, which is another component I mentioned shortly. The air tank I mentioned before, the main, the the air tank reservoir, and uh, finally, it's connected to the you know to it has a pipe that goes to the brake cylinders. Now, when you start, uh, when you connect the car to a train, you start charging up the um, you start charging up the conduit which will put air into every single one of the components I mentioned but the brakes. So you will have uh, uh, the, a full reservoir tank of air and you will have the check tank with as much air as the condor. Now, at this moment, the check tank is closed. Nothing can enter or exit after it's completely charged. It will not recharge automatically. Let me save. Um, I'm slipping, hold up. The valve, uh, the valve reads uh, the amount of pressure that is present uh, into the uh, check tank, uh, compares it to the pressure that is present on the main uh, on the main piping that goes around the uh, that goes around the train, and uh, when you start braking, you are not putting air into the system. You are actually removing air from the system. So the main conduit that runs for the whole length of the train will have uh, less air into it. Now this valve can read that when it sees that the pre the difference in, there is a difference in pressure between the main conduit. Uh, and the um, and the check tank, it will open a valve, a, one of its valves, to the uh, from the main reservoir tank, and the brakes actually actuating the braking. Now, uh, I ran out of water. Fuck me. <laughs> so the at this point, the 
locomotive, uh, sorry, the train now that you reduce air will start breaking because the air in the main conductor is less, uh, has less pressure than the check tank. Now, the check tank can be depressurized to have uh, a less, to have a more delayed braking on the train or to work at lower, uh, lower pressures, pressure differences, or can be excluded altogether with a bypass valve, which is a safety feature if the, the, if the brake come up locked. Um, plus, on Italian, on European railways, in the Italian one at least, uh, you have a valve that you can switch from freight to passenger, which on freight cars is usually full or empty. You put it on full, and you will have a harder braking set for the local, for the train. The train, the, the, the carriage will break harder, and you can put it on uh, empty if you want it to prevent the wheels from locking, uh, and so it will break uh, lighter. This is how it works, basically. A, a tractor work, a tractor and a truck work in a different way. You have uh, a full set of, uh, you know, you have all of the braking cylinders that have a spring that keeps the brake locked on. When you put air into the system, you are really you are pushing against the spring, releasing the springs. A train doesn't work like that. As I said, the, the, the train uses uh, a system that is a bit uh, is a bit different because using a system like uh, a truck, for example, would work if you are talking about a single carriage or a single locomotive. However, it will not work on a long train for a whole set of reasons, which I'm gonna I'm gonna mention shortly once I get the speed under control. So, it, it would not work because on a long train, um, you have, you know, you will have different uh, level of pressures going around. You will have more pressure at the front of the tank, uh, of, of the train, sorry, when you start braking. And you will have less air at the rear of the train when you start braking. Therefore, a braking application will result uh, in the train breaking a lot in the front and not enough in the rear, causing what can be what is usually called, at least in Italy, bunching, which is where all of the trains start pushing at the front and you are running the risk of damaging the, um, the buffers that every car has. I do not know if the same thing is happens with American trains, I just know in Italian trains there is something that can happen. So to prevent that, um, you reduce, you remove again, okay, the, the mission is bugged. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So yeah, you can. So the main problem is that you wouldn't get the and homogeneous braking on the whole train. You want to have all of the train braking at the same time, or more or less the same time. Therefore, you are applying a, a different. Therefore, you are moving air from the system, and then the the main reservoir tank will start applying pressure on the brakes. Now, this is not even the first time that this happens to me, honestly. The older missions tend to be a bit more buggy. Hmm. It's sad because I wanted to end the mission, but I cannot uh, because it's bugged. Bye, blimey. Well, I guess I'm gonna do something else. Uh, there were a couple of train, uh, a couple of trains I haven't showed uh, that uh, I haven't even played yet. I had a DLC, but I've never played them yet. Uh, like the the Western Pacific uh, GP thirty five. So let's put it to the people watching. What would you like to see? A, a another steam locomotive that I can randomly pick uh, and drive around, or do you want to see a bu hopefully bugless uh, uh, diesel electric locomotive climbing and doing all sort of diesel locomotive stuff?
or an electric train? Do you know the main passenger service? Hmm. I'm gonna leave it to you, Leo. Oh, the M4. <laughs> the M4! <laughs> One of the most entertaining trains I have. Yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> now, this is literally one of my favorite train to drive. It's very, very drivable. I really, really like them. They are passenger and electric, though. So, I don't know what you think about that. Hmm. Yes, I like M4s. So I guess that's the, this does it. Let's drive the M4. <laughs> I'm too far up. Where is it? Uh, I'm seven. I'm seven. No, I'm seven. No. Oh, there you go. Hey, Krigslock, uh, how are you doing? Uh, Krigslock, by the way, uh, Krigslock underscore 52 has the nickname of a real steam locomotive. The, the German war locomotive class 52. Which literally is Krigslock 52. Guess what, uh, Krigs? I'm gonna drive an M4. <laughs> I'm gonna drive an M4, believe it or not. Okay, set up your train, load passenger as well. Okay. Key in. Let's put the train into max. Key out. Let's put it on. Oh, no, okay, let's keep it on DC. And we should all be set. To move in theory. Uh, we're gonna turn on the instrument light. All of the systems are on. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go. This is the M4, by the way. I'm running on the third rail. AC cur uh, sorry, DC current third rail. Oh, by the way, we're in New York City, Grand Central Terminal Station, and we're moving out. Oh, of course, I was forgetting the lights. There you go. Now we're talking. Let's keep an eye out for the green blinking light. It means we have the go ahead.
Yes, we are at, at the top. Also, I have found out something. This door has actual physics. Not only you can open it, but when you accelerate, the door will close on itself because of, you know, the, the momentum. I'm not making this up. Let me show you in a moment. Like, this is mo this mod is fantastic. I have been driving Steam, Craig's Lock. I have been driving Steam, but the mission is fucking bugged. I will drive Steam again, but, you know, just... For a change of heart, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, you cannot see it. It's moving. No, okay, I'm gonna make a, a, a hyper fast acceleration. After we hit the new speed limit. Oh, who just start following? Oh, Melkin. Uh, how do you pronounce your name? Melkin. Okay. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna be, be get ready to be amazed, all right, by the physics of this of this mod. And uh, stand it. Look, look at the door. <laughs> it's closing. No, I close it manually. Let's go. Has excellent brakes. I like this train. The M4 is very drivable. Conductable, that should that is the right term. I will get a restriction soon. Eyes on the speedometer on the top left because it also tells me if I have some particular track restrictions which I need to keep an eye out for. And now let's coast for a little more. Okay, so you're gonna see some holes in the roof every now and then. You wanna know why? Because before electric trains were mandatory in New York City, they were running steam locomotives underground. Amazing, right? Of course, who could have saw it coming? There was an accident. Uh, two locomotives did a head-on collision, two boiler uh, ruptured instead of exploding, that poisoned and killed some people therefore they made a regulation that uh, you could not uh, run steam locomotives uh, underground this of course meant that the diesel trains that run underground had to have a dual mode capability so every single diesel you will see on this line can run on both diesel and electric when in this area running underground it will use the third rail so it will be electric. And when going outside, it will turn on the diesel engine. But it's not the, like they didn't ban underground steam locomotives because uh, they were dangerous, but because of the steam uh, preventing conductors from seeing where the, the train was going, which was, uh, as you can imagine, a bit of a problem.
Krixlock, do you want to do a power supply test on this locomotive to see if it has enough to ripple? <laughs> uh, Sadie Tech would be proud. Harlem, 125th Street, 6.47, we are well on schedule. <laughs> the railing, apparently. And we are stopped. So this is a double set of three uh, cars, they are split here, you can see there are two cabs here. It's very interesting the design of this train. Oh, we wait for the passenger to disembark, or embark, depending on where they want to go. So the emergency brake in the wagons is like this handle right over here. Uh, every wagon has something like that. Uh, remember when I mentioned that when you remove air from the system that the brakes uh, come on? The same thing. The emergency brake valve uh, on these trains uh, does a little more than simply releasing the vacuum. Sorry, releasing the, the, the brake pressure from the pipe. Um, but normally on normal trains like the the normal regional train you have we have in italy if you pull the emergency brake you will simply open up a valve and will release the air outside the brake in the train now these trains and even the more the more modern uh, um the more modern rock and pop train that we have or like the freccia rossa or even this one I'm driving, the M4, when you pull the emergency brake, you're not gonna only open the conduit, letting the air out, but you're also go on full electric brake mode. Hey Peter, how are you doing? Nice to see you here. I'm driving an M4. Pit, this is an M4. I was trying to drive a steam locomotive before, but as I was driving, the game bugged and wouldn't let me put water into the locomotive, therefore uh, making me fail the, scenar the scenario. But yesterday it was working just fine, so I guess it's a bug. It's a bug. I need to redo the whole mission in one shot to prevent bugs. Every time we save and we restart, uh, there, there are some bugs with steam locomotive in this game. What can we do? It's an old game. Okay, new limit 40 miles an hour, let's go.
Coming out of New York City. Portham is the next station. It's very peaceful to drive this thing. Now, as I prob you probably heard me saying, this thing can run on both on both uh, AC uh, overhead the wire uh, electricity and DC third rail electricity, like in this case. In this case, I'm running with the third rail direct current electricity. But I have pantograph on top of the train, right? This means I can use the catenary in AC in alternate current, right? Which means I have to do a transition from DC to AC. Well, you will see in a while. After after Mount Vernon at Pelham, I will have to switch from uh, third rail to pantographs. It's quite sim. It's uh, very similar to how uh, Austrian trains coming to Italy or Italian trains going to Austria has to change the pantograph depending on where they go. Like if uh, a Austrian train with uh, um, AC power on the overhead wires is coming to Italy, they will have to lower the pantograph in, in some specific areas that are the predetermined to do just that. And uh, then uh, raise the other set of pantograph for, the, for DC current, because believe it or not, Italy uses the DC current for train on overhead wires. It's much simpler to work with, except for high speed rail, then we use alternate current, yeah. That's an M3. Uh, sorry, an M2. And here we are. Oh, by the way, we are running a morning commuter, the same train you would take to go to university, for example. <laughs> Let's start braking, we need to stop here. That's uh, number seven. By the way, uh, Krigslock, I I was planning on on going on the on the Corris railway, one day or another. It's a very very quirky little map. Alright, let the passenger in, get ready to move on the gas. Here we go. 
I was about to overspeed. Wow. As I said on the title, questions uh, are free. I will answer every question. Ask me anything. Anything, exactly. Quite literally, is zooming out of New York. I don't remember where exactly, but we should cross over into another state in a while, actually. Connecticut. You can see there are the poles, but not the wires. It will happen shortly, the, the switch between uh, uh, these two AC. Okay, Mount Vernon.
and here we are. Yeah, we should. This is the passenger view, by the way. Okay, get ready to make the change between the two current systems. First, we need speed. It's gonna be very simple. You will be amazed. Okay, now you can see the wires. Now I'm gonna put it on coast. Put the lever on AC pen up and press this for a couple of seconds. The light should change. And we have power, gentlemen. Let's proceed. We did the switch. Let's go. Welcome to Palam. And there we go. Palam. Next station is New Rochelle. You can see the pantographs are now up. Oh, and by the way, it's not me having a shitty computer that gets this low frame rate, uh, is the game itself uh, being old. If anyone was wondering, still playable though. Here we go. That's an M8. That's an M8. Kawasaki. It's made by Kawasaki. I'm not making this up. It's a Kawasaki M8. Yeah, it's not optimized for new uh, wire, for new hardware. Please look. Oh, and by the way, these diesel locomotives you see on these other trains, uh, they also have a third rail system, so they can run on electricity when in tunnel, as I was saying before.
from now on we share we share trackers with uh, Amtrak as well. Are we on schedule? Yeah, we are two minutes ahead of schedule. No need to thank me. Just doing my job. You call them the Marklin Genesis. Yeah, I call it P42 ACDM. models hello Peter dragon how are you doing nice to see you around We're waiting for the people to embark and then we can proceed. The schedule is that we should be leaving at 7.08 a.m. around that time. Then we have Larchmond, uh, Mammon Rec, Harrison, uh, Rye, Port, Chester, Greenwich and Stanford. Okay, we can proceed. By the way, the streams here are the proof that it's only StreamYard that gives me problem with the microphone.
And here we are. Oh, uh, by the way, Crypsilock, I don't remember if I told you already, but I found out a workshop nearby where I live that specializes in working with metal. And when I've been there, I was like, well, no way these guys don't, you know, never did anything on Steam Locomotive before. And I asked the boss, his lights light up like a kid when you show them candy. And he told me that, yes, he indeed does stuff for model trains. This guy is uh, someone that built, uh, you know, steam tractors in, you know, in small scale and uh, he would be up for work on my uh, steam locomotives on uh, seven inches tracks, uh, seven and a quarter inches track. So my dream is coming to reality slowly but surely. Oh, also, the reason why I say the M4 here is very, very nice to drive is because its brakes are beautiful. They are not harsh, huh? and it still brakes uh, very well. Also, Chris, does, do you think uh, Study Tech would find out that this thing has more ripple on AC or DST modes? very much for following.
Yeah, hold up, because this thing has AC motors on it. If I recall correctly. But I would hate to be wrong, so I'm gonna check up later. Or if anyone can fact check this for me. Does the M4, uh, the Metro North M4 uses, uh, has, eng has the electric motors in AC or DC? No, in the Americans, uh, I would I would be surprised uh, if it's uh, actually DC. We're well ahead of schedule again. have to transform it anyway regardless so, so all of the big packs of things you see on on trains like on top of trains is usually everything usually to convert the electricity right so it takes a lot of space e20 e626 be like i'm gonna melt down Like the honest uh, E626 reaction be like kaboom. <laughs> yeah. My main goal is to blow up. Nah, all kidding aside, the, e the E626 is one of the one of the most legendary electric locomotives Italy ever had. An absolute unit uh, and a very good engine for what it did. Come on, passengers, get on board. I hear something coming up. It's an Amtrak. I bet my ass it's an Amtrak coming up. Yes, it's a yeah, it's an ACX sixty four. As I said, we share trackers with Amtrak. With Amtrak. Yeah. Okay, we're going next stop is Rai. Ah, that's like one of the VTubers a friend of mine tried to try to um, get into our AMA unit. Low. 
Bray. coming up. You know, there's a whole world of uh, songs uh, about uh, trains and railroads. Uh, you guys have no idea. Well, is that an M2 or an M4? I think it's an M2. Oh, uh, yep, it's an M2. Next stop is Port Chester. Port Chester. Let's go! Full power! Speed and power! Also tomorrow I want to work on Arma. Tomorrow I'm gonna do some Arma. The moment I managed to, to do poll on YouTube, oh, by the way, by the way, you can follow me on Twitter where I'm planning to make some polls uh, there to decide what to do in the next in the next live streams. So if you go on Twitter, you search for Peter Ironborn, you will find that because Twitter for me is not a serious platform and therefore I'm giving it the seriousness that it deserves. Therefore, I will manage my VTube. Uh, well, my VTubing account there. So if you guys are interested in participating in the polls and stay updated to the news, this is where you, this is 
that's where you can go. Full power. Next stop, Greenwich. Okay, Guinness is the second to last. And here we are. Second to last stop. Come on, we're almost there. No, next stop, four miles, five miles away. I can feel the tiredness now, oh, wow. Oh, Stanford next and last. Also, to the people that were there, uh, that were here, sorry, in the last live stream, what do you prefer? What do you prefer, this type of train or the steam locomotives? Oh, an Acela.
Let me know. Steam or this thing? Or do you prefer the diesel if you saw the first live stream I did on Brain Simulator? Whoa, running too fast. My bad. Now, this location is very interesting. Okay. This location, if I recall correctly, is very interesting because you see there is a moving bridge right here, right? So, in real life, you will see that there is a part where you do not see the wires. The wires dis will disappear for a while. Look. And uh, where is it? There you go. The wire disappeared. And now they reappear. Why? Because that part of the bridge will actually lift, right? So, because we need to let the big ships through and the bridge needs to lift, we cannot have wires there. And so, for this train, it's not a problem because there are multiple units, right? So, you have multiple pantograph for the whole length of the train. On trains like the HTS-64, the Amtrak uh, train that we saw earlier, that has only one pantograph working at the time, because it has only one power unit, uh, has a battery pack that, or uh, sorry, not a battery pack, a bunch of, of a of condenser accumulators that will make sure that the, the train has enough power, to, you know, to move without uh, uh, taking power from the wires. But usually, you want to traverse that area while coasting to prevent problems. So is everything alright with the microphone? Do you like these settings? Is the music too loud? Is the game too loud? Let me know, please. Okay, you can see that now the L lot lit up, but this means I have a restriction on the line, 45 miles an hour. I love this signaling system.
And this is where my service ends. 7.37 a.m. Stamford. Okay, we're done here. Well, to the people that watched the stream so far, I'm sorry for my mistake at the beginning. I shared a dead link to a stream. Um, I hope uh, you found at least uh, this part of the stream interesting. And to the new people I saw on the stream, I hope to see you again. Um, I'm gonna end the stream after this mission is done. So, people, have a very, very pleasant and good evening. I'll see you tomorrow with Arma. <laughs>